Okay, so welcome to the third module of this course on human resource development and in this module basically we will talk about that how to design and develop, deliver and evaluate an HRD program. So, the next two modules that is 3 and 4 is primarily concerned with HRD process that what are the HRD process model that we are going to use and then how we are going to make use of this model to ensure that we are able to perform well. Now, <coughs> when we are talking about the HRD process model in its totality we see that it includes four different stages. The first stage is that we are going to assess the needs of the HRD, second stage basically we are going to design and develop HRD program. So, in this module basically uh, in this week we are going to cover these two parts that how to assess HRD needs and how to design and develop an HRD programs. Okay. And the fourth module we will talk about how to implement an HRD pro, uh, program that is how to deliver an HRD program and how to evaluate that is going to be in the fourth module. So, here we are starting with the first part in the first session we will talk about assessment of the HRD needs that how we are going to assess HRD needs. Okay. And in the process that why we should go for assessing HRD needs and how we get the data for identifying the needs of the people. right? So, this is what we are going to discuss in the first session. Now, when we are talking about need assessment, the first question that comes to mind is that why need us, why we are going to assess the need of the people, in what way it is going to help us to find out what is the requirement. See training is a kind of investment that you are going to make into the people. right? And you know that most of the organizations today, not only in India, but worldwide spend lot of money in billions on training and development activities. As uh, and as I told you that if these training and development activities does not bring or uh, make any change in the performance, then it becomes futile. Okay. So, in order to see that you are able to match the requirement of the people with the organization, it is very very important that you are able to identify the needs of the people or the areas or the things that that is where they need to be trained. And that is why we have to ask certain questions before we proceed further for assessing the need. Okay. So, we look at some of the issues related to need assessment that is what is the purpose of this analysis or assessment, why you are going for this kind of assessment. The idea is that this will help you to identify who are the people who need to be trained and what are the areas where they need to be trained. Okay. So, unless you do this analysis, you will be in a dark, you will not be able to find out why you are going to train somebody, who is to be trained, in which area you need to train some people. right? So, this is going to answer this question, okay? because if you are not able to identify who are the people who need to be trained at what level, then how will you make a decision? that who is going to be trained. Right? So, this is going to help you take decisions that okay, with this assessment you have been able to identify a set of people at different level who needs training in different kind of areas. Right? So, the basic objective of need assessment you identify people at their need. So, the if you are going for assessment the idea is that this is going to help you certain problems. So, that you are not in a dark and you know that you are going to train the right kind of people. right? Because if you do not train the right kind of people, it will not help you to achieve the expected performance level. right? Okay. And then at the end of it, you look at it whether you have the resource to do it or not. Because this kind of investigation is used to identify people who need to be trained. And one important thing that you have to look at it that whether the organization has the resources to train the people or not. If you know that the organization has the resources to train the people, only then you go for doing this exercise, otherwise you do not do this exercise, because otherwise it is going to be a futile exercise. Now, need and as assessment is also known as a front end analysis. Okay. It means that you are going to take certain steps, which is analytical and decision making 
which helps you to plan to see that what is the deficiencies in the human performance. The basic idea of needs assessment is to find out the gap in the performance of the people. right? So, the idea of need assessment is to identify the gap in the performance of the people and the kind of analysis that you do is known as front end analysis. So, that helps you to find out what is required, what is really needed. Okay. See, it is not an easy task to identify the need of the people, because unless you go for a very systematic analysis in the perspective, it is very difficult to find out what needs to be done. Okay. So, it requires lot of input at different levels at the individual level, at the organizational level, at the process level, right, at the task level. So, you need to do, do this need, need assessment very seriously and this requires a lot of analysis. Okay. Now, the idea is that whether you want to do it right now or do it later. The thing is that you must do it right now, because if you find that there is a performance gap in the people, it means that they are not able to perform to the level that is your benchmark or the standard. right? So, if you leave it for later probably, you will continue to have deficiency in the performance of the people. right? So, when it the question comes that whether you are going to do it right now or you have to do it later, you look at your priorities, how important it is. If you find that this kind of performance gap is acceptable or acceptable, then you can leave it, do not need to do it. But you think that this kind of performance gap is not accepted, then you have to do it right now. So, this is the first stage in the HRD process or what when you call it ISD, okay, that is instructional system design or human resource development process. So, the need assessment is the first stage where you are going to find out the gaps in the performance or deficiency in the performance and then you see that what is this gap. It helps you to identify who are the people who need to be trained and what are the areas that they need to be trained. And this requires lot of data collection on the part of the organization to identify the needs of the people. Now, another question that is very, very important is training the solution. So, you have a benchmark performance or standard performance for a particular job. Now, at the first stage you need to communicate this to the individual that is what is your expected performance. right? Now, once you get the feedback about the performance, you can see whether the performance level or benchmark performance have been achieved by the individual or not. Okay. So, you will be able to identify a gap in the benchmark related to performance and the actual performance. If it is matching, do not need to go for training. If it is not matching, then you go for performance because not matching it means there is a deficiency or gap in the performance. That is one thing, but it does not mean that training is the solution. So, when I say that training is not a solution, what does it mean? Whether this gap in the performance is due to knowledge or a skill or something else. What is your answer? If the answer is yes, go for training. If the answer is no, look at some alternatives. Right. He might be having the knowledge and the skill base, but he is simply not interested, there is no motivation right? and that is why his performance is affected. 
So, you need to go for some kind of alternative actions like mentoring, counseling and this kind of things, which is going to help you to improve his performance. So, not necessary training is always the answer. If there is a performance gap because of knowledge and skill base, it means that you want to improve his ability in terms of knowledge, skill base or competencies, then training is the answer. If it is because, it, if it is because of motivation, lack of interest and other things, then you have to find out the answers. Okay. What else need to be done? Because if you are giving him training and to bridge the performance gap and it is not bridged, then there could be other factors which is responsible. He might be having the knowledge and skill base, but he simply is not interested and motivated enough. Right? So, training is not always the solution, it is not the panacea for everything. So, you have to see that what needs to be done to see that the person is able to perform. And that is why you have a number of HRD interventions. So, before you move further, you must identify the gap and find out whether training is a solution or not. Right? Moving further, if you look at uh, the model that is available, is there are two different model. Okay? HRD process model, which is also known as AD model, A D D I E and the name is this one. And then you have PDM, which is known as product development model or instructional system design model. right? Now, analysis means, A means analysis, D means design, other D means develop, E implement and finally, E evaluate. So, HRD or what you call the AD model is most widely accepted and it has a parallel with what you call the ISD model and uh, where you call about analyze, design, develop, then you go, go for pilot product pilot testing where you see whether it is going to be successful or not, then evaluate the pilot, then deliver and finally, evaluate. Okay. So, what I am talking about is that you can see uh, there is a parallel between HRD, ID model or PRDM and ISD model. So, more or less all of them talk about certain stages and if you look at the HRD process model, it talks about four stages that is analysis, assessment part, design and development is taken together in the ID model and implement as how we are going to deliver it and finally, the evaluation, how we are going to evaluate the effectiveness of the HRD intervention. Right. Similarly, in PDM and ISD model, you see more or less same steps, except that you once you are going to design and develop program, you are going for a pilot testing to see whether it really works on a small set of people, and then you are going to use it. Right. Otherwise, more or less you will find that it is comparable. So, this is a process model which we are going to discuss one by one, and we are dealing here with the first stage that is the anal uh, assessment stage that is the analysis of the training needs. Now, if you look at the causes and outcomes of the need assessment, what happens? Okay. So, <coughs> if you look at this, it basically gives you a brief or overview idea of need assessment process, the entire need assessment process. Now, in the mid middle you will find that what kind of analysis is done, three kind of analysis is done to identify the need organization analysis, task analysis and personal analysis. So, that is what we are going to discuss at a later stage. At the first stage, what we are going to see that why we are going for that, why there is a need to assess, there could be number of factors because the change in the legislations, the people do not have basic uh, skills, basic English skills means your reasoning skills, your arithmetic skills, your communication skills. right? Then your performance could be a factor, technology could be a factor, okay. customer requests, there could be customer requests also, you are going to work on new products, you want to achieve higher performance, your benchmark has gone up, as a new job, so that is to assess that okay, what is the requirement. Now, there could be a number of factors or these are called pressure points, which necessitates to do certain kind of analysis in the context of organization, task and person and that is what we are going to discuss further okay, to identify who needs training. 
and then the outcome is that you based on this you can see okay who is going to uh, get the training okay what is what will be the method how frequently you are going to do it whether you are going to do it in house or outsource it right so all kind of outcomes are basically comes out once you define the training needs of the people so you can see the antecedents and outcomes of the this analysis and the analysis part where you are going to assess to identify that needs of the training of the people consists three parts that is organization task and person so they need to be analyzed right moving further so this is the process these are the different processes adopted by american society for training and development which is more or less same as i have talked about now if you look at these three systems they are more or less talk about similar things like bea systems you have to look at the environment the project training project you look at your objectives look at the knowledge current levels to find out the gap and then you are going to recommend training okay in the other model you see that what is your interest look at the performance deficiency okay what else you can do whether you can ignore it or whether you should go for it okay and then look at the cost benefit for offering this program the possible cost benefit in the sense that okay if you are going to uh, invest money on this kind of uh, training and development activity in what way it is going to benefit then you want to see the learners analysis you are going to see the attitude interest and motivation of the people then you go for this kind of program right the swenson has given a better model because you say that okay first of all you look at the diagnose the performance of the people okay and then see what what are the various measures that you are going to take and then see what are the needs of the people in terms of performance develop a proposal and then you document in terms of what is the task that is to be done what what are the requirements from the person what kind of knowledge and skill base would be required okay so these activities had to be taken up as a as a part of the need analysis process right moving further what we are going to discuss is that yes we are we are all talking about the needs that is to be looked into so what is a need so the need is the basic discrepancy between the expectations and the performance it means what is your actual performance and what is the expected performance okay that is how we are going to arrive at the deal and this they could they could be different kind of needs like it could be related to performance it could be related to diagnosis it could be related to the analysis like there could be better way of doing things and that also brings out a need okay or there could be compliance needs which could which is uh, regulated by man, mandated by law regulation for example now you know that gst is going to be applied in the organization so uh, instead of so many taxes that you have now you are going to have a goods and services tax from 1st of july so this is kind of a, a mandated by law and regulation so every company have to uh, say go for this kind of regulation gst so they need to train people they have to see that how you are going to implement in your organization so this is something that is complied by the law okay and that is how the need arises right then the most important thing is that when you go for <coughs> assessment you have to find out the data related to performance okay of the individual right so what are the different methods that could be used to identify the data related to the performance right so here we will discuss some of the important methods that is they are like interviews who is going to be interviewed you can interview the managers people others who know about the job they could be interviewed and from there you can find out what is expected from the performance and what are the activities that the person is doing okay so anybody who is engaged with or is knowledgeable about the job could be interviewed in the process now another method to collect data is questionnaires okay questionnaires uh, itself is not very uh, good method because uh development cost of the question is very high okay and you have to have proper kind of questions to get the data okay but questionnaires are very often used to find out the details about the job that a person is doing okay the details about his knowledge and skill details about the requirement of the organization because the analysis is to be done at three level that is 
organizational level, task level and a person level. So, the data needs are required at the organization level, task level and person level. right? So, this data can be obtained through questionnaires, it could be structured or it could also be unstructured. Now, when we are talking about unstructured questionnaire, okay, based on experiences you can ask, okay, you have certain questions open ended or close ended or you can ask certain things which you think is going to help you to get the data. Unstructured format, for example, you know that these are the three important variables, the organization, task and person and each of these variables are important for each of these variables you are going to have data related to individual at such, uh, say interest, motivation, ability, knowledge and skill related to task, organization, what is the requirement of the organization. So, you develop a structured questionnaire with some open ended questions because not necessarily that everything can be capped in a structured questionnaire. So, you also giving them some opportunity if they have something to say to come out with in these questionnaires. Okay. So, questionnaire is another way to collect the data. Then we have observations. Observations mean that you are going to see that how people are doing the things. So, you actually go to the place and say the context in which the performance happens. right? Sometimes, if you are going to watch and see how the person is doing, they become cautious. right? So, sometimes they you alter your normal behavior, the way you should behave and you are trying to be you become more cons, uh, conscious and then you try to do something that is desirable. Okay. So, you go for unapproved observation that is what we call a non participant observation. In case of non participant observation what happens? You are going to participate or observe without being known to the participant that they are being watched, what they are doing. right? So, that so with observation of what? What the person is doing, okay? what is his abilities, what is kind of motivation, interest and these kind of things are there, what, what the organization is doing in terms of support and other kind of things. So, you can use observations also and it is always good to go for non participant observation instead of participant observation because that gives you more reliable data. right? So, we have talked about interview questionnaires and observations which are uh, quite often used, but in addition to that you also collect data related to perform performance, the background data. right? For example, from the company records, the production uh, records, the from the manuals, uh, budgets, uh, his performance evaluation reports, goals and objectives production charts and other kind of things. So, this will give you data for different kind of tasks that the person is doing and because it helps you to match to see whether you have been able to get the required information or not. right? So, background research is also important to basically that you give you an idea to find out the deficiency. right? You can also go for group discussion that is known as Delphi or uh, DACUM that is known as developing a curriculum. right? It is nothing else but a single seat profile which serves both as a curriculum plan and evaluation in instrument for training programs. right? So, you have a, a specific description for a particular job, then look at the competencies that is required for the job, then see what are the specific skills behavior for each competencies and see whether people have it or not okay? and then you can find out the gap. And you can also relate these competencies with the job that is to be performed by the individual. right? So, group discussion is a better way to find out and it could be supplemented by other methods also. So, now if you look at uh, the, uh, the advantage and disadvantages of collecting data using different kind of methods, look at the questionnaires. The advantage is that you can collect large amount of data, okay? but it restricts you to specific areas, you do not require trend interviews you time effective for large number of participants because you can get the data. Disadvantage is that you need to give them very explicit in, uh, instructions on how to rate, how to give data or information related to that one. right? So, if you are not able to provide some kind of incentive, probably people do not respond. right? Some incentive is to be given to motivate people right? and you need also good size to find out the reliability of the data. Moving to the observation, basically it is a good one, but it is very time taking okay? and you need trained observers to get the data or you go for automatic cameras, you can use CCTV cameras to find out how people behave, how people work in a work environment. But if people come to know about it, 
they become conscious and they, will, they will not give you data. But similarly, if it is very expensive and time consuming okay, and data are not easily quantifiable because you are going to observe the data and it is more qualitative right that is another disadvantage. Then face to face interview it, it has more accurate because it has a high response rate you get information first hand okay, but you have to spend more time right and you also get opportunity to see and how the people are responding in detail. Okay. But it is very again time ex, uh, in terms of time and it is very very expensive and sometimes you get uh, information which may not be relevant or useful also because he might tell you something which may not be relevant. Okay. But again you need trained interviewers. You can go for telephonic interviews less costly and also not face to face, but you get non-verbal feedback, but you do not get any non, uh, say no non-verbal non -verbal feedback you do not because you are not um, talking face to face. If you talk about DACOM or Delphi, yes you get a very high response rate, you get better data on for the time that you are spending, but you have to see that it has it is to be very very structured because you need to schedule time, you see that participants are not biased, they are giving proper response, you need a trained people right and sometimes you get external responses which may not be relevant or useful. So, that is all thank you very much.